I'm going to speak on some delicate topics regarding which undoubtedly some devotees are not going to be very happy. I pray in speaking about this that I speak in a manner that is pleasing to Srila Prabhupada. I'm not deliberately out to upset any devotees. It might happen. The topic is this. There is a new GBC resolution about initiation, partially with myself in mind. That is uh, quite clear. I'll read part of the resolution. Gurus and those who recommend initiation candidates shall not make any distinction on birth, nationality, race, ethnicity, previous sangskar, marital status, gender, or classifications within the varnas, such as occupational livelihood, as to who would be eligible to take those vows and receive those mantras in full at first and second initiation. Uh, just as an aside, before I get into the main topic of this talk, it's quite conceivable that someone who's initiating would make some distinction according to birth, according to birth, ethnicity. For instance, he might think, well, I only speak such and such a language and I prefer to initiate only people who I can speak to directly in the same language. For instance, that's not exactly regarding eligibility, but he might decide to <clears throat> restrict his initiating to devotees he can directly speak with. He might decide just to have very few disciples. Previous sanskar, I remember a few years ago, there was a devotee in prison for having killed several people and he wanted to get initiated. <clears throat> and I know at least one guru who didn't want to initiate him. He said, I, I don't want to take that karma. So previous sanskar, marital status. Well, I'll say right now, I, I don't want to initiate someone who's been married and divorced seven times. That would definitely be a factor. And gender, if someone presents themselves as being gender fluid, I don't want to initiate them. Anyway, the crux of this talk which I'm giving is that some of my policies regarding initiation have been officially forbidden. <coughs> Specifically, my not giving Brahma Gayatri to lady devotees, and generally not Brahminical initiation to devotees who are employed in a job. Uh, this may raise some eyebrows. Uh, well, that wasn't Prabhupada's policy. I'll explain my rationale. I'm especially under fire for not giving Brahma Gaiji to women, and it may seem shocking that I do Something different to Srila Prabhupada. Changing something. Well, the GBC itself has made so many changes in initiation procedures. They've instituted so many things which Srila Prabhupada didn't, that one has to take certain courses and tests, have an official recommendation, They've given new vows for the initiates and statements that the guru is supposed to say. So, I'm not the only one making changes. What I'm doing, I'm doing as part of 
of our ashram initiative. Shortly before departing from this world, Srila Prabhupada stated, 50% of my work is not complete because I have not established Varnashram Dharma. This quote has been challenged, but it is given by uh, Abhiram Prabhu, who, who is with Srila Prabhupada in Srila Prabhupada's last days in this world manifest. This is quoted in a book called uh, Varnashram Dharma. Similar quotes are in Tamal Krishna Goswami's TKG's diary, given as 10th of August, 1977, and Bhakti Charu Swami also, in his memoir of Srila Prabhupada, a book called Ocean of Mercy, also records Srila Prabhupada having said this. Now, if we consider the miraculous, unprecedented, previously unimaginable, colossal service that Srila Prabhupada performed to Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's mission, this statement underscores the massive importance of Varnashram Dharma in Srila Prabhupada's vision for the worldwide unfolding of Krishna consciousness. Even if you reject that 50% quote and say, well, I don't believe that, there are plenty of other quotes. I'll give some samples of Srila Prabhupada's very clear desires for establishing Varnashram Dharma, which should be better known and acted upon among the followers of Srila Prabhupada. I'm going to quote from Bhagavatam, Canto 4, Chapter 29, Text 54. 54 purport in which Srila Prabhupada writes, There should be a thorough overhauling of the social system and society should revert to the Vedic principles, that is, the four Varnas and the four Ashrams. From Srila Prabhupada's purport to Bhagavatam, Canto 7, Chapter 11, Text 18 to 20, purport. Although the Krishna consciousness movement is a movement of Brahmanas and Vaishnavas, it is trying to reestablish the divine Varnashram institution. For without this division of society, there cannot be peace and prosperity anywhere. So here Srila Prabhupada states that it's uh, specifically a function of the Krishna consciousness movement to reestablish the divine Varnashram institution. And even more explicitly, if you can, if, if you don't think that's convincing enough, Srila Prabhupada in a lecture, lecture, 29th of November, 1971, stated that the International Society for Krishna Consciousness is trying to establish this Daiva Varnashram. There is a common objection that Varnashram is, has nothing to do with bhakti, with devotional service. Srila Prabhupada wrote in his purport to Bhagavatam, Canto 10, Chapter 5, Texts 15 to 16, the Varnashram system is entirely meant for Vishnu Aradhana, worship of Lord Vishnu. From Srila Prabhupada's purport to Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita, Adi Leela, Chapter 12, Text 73, Accepting the process of Varnashram Dharma will make a person's life successful because this will connect him with the Supreme Personality of Godhead who is the goal of human life. So what's all that about? Nothing to do with devotional service. Here are some more quotes. Actually, there are many, many quotes like this. Bhagavatam, Canto 4, Chapter 20. Text 28, Purport. By following the principles of Varnashram Dharma, one can satisfy the Supreme Lord. Bhagavatam, Canto 9, Chapter 10, Text 50. The purpose of Varnashram is to enable people to become God conscious. The entire Varnashram scheme is intended to enable people to become Vaishnavas. Bhagavatam, Canto 1, Chapter 2, Text 2, Purport. 
Ultimately, the aim of Varnashram Dharma is to turn a crude man into a pure devotee of the Lord. Still not convinced? This is from a letter of Srila Prabhupada, 4th of January, 1973. The Varnash, the Varnashram Dharma system is scientifically arranged by Krishna to provide facility for delivering the fallen souls back to home, back to Godhead. Bhagavatam, Canto 1, Chapter 19, Text 4, Purport. The system of Varnashram Dharma prepares a man for going back to Godhead. Bhagavatam, Canto 9, Chapter 10, Text 50, Purport. People should be trained to become Vaishnavas through the system of Varna and Ashrama. Bhagavatam, Canto 6, Chapter 16, Text 43. Those who have come to the platform of human civilization should be divided into a society of Brahmanas, Kshatriyas, Vaishyas, and Shudras. The Brahmanas should follow the instructions of the Supreme Personality of Godhead as stated in Bhagavad Gita and other Vedic literatures. The criterion must be Guna and Karma. In other words, one should acquire the qualities of a Brahmana, Kshatriya, Vaishya or Shudra and act accordingly. This is the civilization accepted by the Aryans. Why do they accept it? They accept it because they are very eager to satisfy Krishna. This is perfect civilization. Very eager to satisfy Krishna. In Bhagavad Gita as it is, chapter 2, text 31, purport, Srila Prabhupada states that Varnashram Dharma is man's stepping stone for spiritual understanding. In a letter, 18th of January 1969, Srila Prabhupada wrote, this Krishna consciousness movement is meant for a complete overhauling of the whole social, political, religious, moral, educational, and hygienic principles. Without following these principles, human society cannot rise to the spiritual platform. It doesn't directly mention Varnashram, but the overhauling is, uh, if we take it in the context of so many other quotes, it's clear that it's Varnashram. In Srila Prabhupada's purport to Bhagavatam, Kanto 1, Chapter 2, Text 13, the Varnashram, the Varnashram institution is constructed to enable one to realize the absolute truth. Bhagavatam, Kanto 3, Chapter 22, Text 4, the entire social structure of Varna and Ashram is a cooperative system meant to uplift all to the highest platform of spiritual realization. In a lecture on the 13th of September 1973, Srila Prabhupada stated that by Varnashram Dharma, people will be automatically enlightened. In the... Bhagavatam, Canto 5, Chapter 19, Chapter Summary, how this automatic enlightenment takes place is described. The effect of adhering to the institution of Varnashram is gradual elevation to the spiritual platform and liberation from material bondage. By following the principles of Varnashram, Dharma, one gets the opportunity to associate with devotees. Such association gradually awakens one's dormant propensity to serve the Supreme Personality of Godhead and frees one from all the basic principles of sinful life. One then gets the opportunity to offer unalloyed devotional service to the Supreme Lord Vasudeva. In a conversation on the 14th, of March 1974, Srila Prabhupada said that 
devotees are above Varnashram. However, in the same conversation, Srila Prabhupada said, to give others facility to come to the stage of Krishna consciousness, this program must be done. We must pave the situation in such a way that gradually, people in general, will be promoted to the spiritual plane. Uh, in a conversation on the 14th of February, 1977, Srila Prabhupada said, our, du our duty is that we shall arrange the external affairs all so nicely that one day they will come to the spiritual platform very easily, paving the way. We are preaching, therefore we must pave the situation in such a way that gradually they will be promoted to the spiritual plane. As Srila Prabhupada explained, uh, Iskon is for the devotees, but not everyone will become a devotee. Not everyone will be able to surrender to Krishna. For those who will not, who will continue to act according to the modes of material nature, in order to situate them in the proper human culture, we need Varnashram Dharma. This is uh, Srila Prabhupada speaking, uh, paraphrased by Bhakti Charu Swami Maharaj in his memoir, The Ocean of Mercy. Then, 14th of March, 1974, Srila Prabhupada said, Our main aim is to give them Krishna consciousness, but if they are already disturbed in every respect, then how will they take it? Therefore, to help him come to Krishna consciousness, this is the method, Varnashram. Now, you might think, well, this doesn't address what I spoke of in the beginning of the lecture, but I'm just trying to set the scene, so to speak, that how important this Varnashram initiative was that Srila Prabhupada again and again, or was and is, that Srila Prabhupada, he spoke about it so much, he wanted to establish it. So it's, it's, I'm just quoting a few of many, 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 many more quotes which establish the importance in Srila Prabhupada's mission of establishing Varnashram Dharma. Uh, because what I'm doing might be seen as something uh, maverick, or, but I feel I have to do it. And I feel that I'm justified in doing so because of the importance Srila Prabhupada put on this. Now, I'm going to read uh, again from a conversation that Srila Prabhupada gave on February the 14th, 1977. Uh, of course, Srila Prabhupada gave many practical directions for the execution of his movement, the continuation of his movement uh, in conversations and in letters. Uh, and this February the 14th, 1977, what Srila Prabhupada said because it's later than other things that he said, it supersedes whatever was said previously, uh, and it can be taken as a guide for us on into the future. So this, quoting from the uh, conversation, Satsarup Maharaj said, in our ISKCON, one becomes a Brahmana after a year, it's not very hard. Everyone becomes a Brahmana. Srila Prabhupada. That is due to chanting. That lift very easily. Hari Shuri. Where will we introduce the Varnashram system then? Srila Prabhupada. In our society, among our members. Hari Shuri. But then if everybody is being raised to the Brahminical platform... Srila Prabhupada, not everybody. Why are you misunderstanding? Varnashram, not everybody Brahmana. Hari Shori. No, but in our society, practically everyone is being raised to that platform. So then my, one might ask, what is? Hari Shori Prabhu is referring to the 
standard policy at that time that anyone who'd been initiated with Harinam initiation, after a few months, they would be Brahminically initiated. Uh, and Srila Prabhupada re replied, everybody is being raised, but they're falling down. Hari Shari. So then should we, should we make it more difficult to get Brahminical initiation after four or five years? Uh, so then should we make it more difficult to get? Prabhupada said, yes. And then Brahminical initiation after four or five years. And Srila Prabhupada said, not necessary. You, may ne you remain as a Kshatriya. Hari Shari. No need for even any Brahmin initiation then? Prabhupada, no, no. Srila Prabhupada continued, Brahmana must be there. Not that a Shudra man by force becomes a Brahmana. You cannot improve. That is not possible. But even if he remains a Shudra and does accordingly, he will get the same position as a devotee. Swakarmana tamabhyarcha siddhing vindati manavaha. He'll get the perfection. At the present moment, the idea is that if one remains a Shudra, he cannot get perfection. No, even a Shudra can get perfection provided he does the work of a Shudra perfectly. Hari Shori, for Krishna, Prabhupada. Therefore, why should a Shudra artificially be made a Brahmana? Let him remain a Shudra, and if he strictly follows the rules and regulations of Shudras, he'll also be as good as a Brahmana. The same example, just like the head is as, is as important as my leg. It is not that because it is the leg, it is less important than my head. And if you ask the head, do the work of a leg, it is impossible. And if you ask the leg to work as a brain, that is impossible. Let him remain brain, let him remain leg, and do your duty, and you become perfect. Satsarup. Today you've been saying that the Vaishnava is the highest above the Brahmana. But then we've also understood that everyone in Iskon is a Vaishnava. Srila Prabhupada, yes, Vaishnava, everyone. Even if he's not a Brahmana. Jivar Sarup, Hoi Krishna, Todas. But you have to gradually bring him to that pure consciousness that I am a servant of Krishna. Here, the bodily conception is going on. I am American. I am Indian. I am this. I am that. If you read the full conversation, it is clear that Srila Prabhupada is repeatedly emphasizing that there is no need for a devotee to be designated as a brahmana, in order to get perfection. Another quote from that conversation, Srila Prabhupada said, a brahmana has his duty, kshatriya has his duty, a vaisha has his duty, a shudra has his duty. And if he performs his duty nicely, then he also becomes perfect. So why artificially should he be called a brahmana? Let them do according to Shastra, the work of a Shudra or a Vaisha. He'll get perfection. Perfection is not checked. But why artificially should he be made, should he be made a Brahmana or a Sannyasi and fall down and become ludicrous? That is the point. Better let him live in his position and become perfect. That's good. That looks very nice. That is possible. And when Satsarup Maharaj asked a practical question that what would the Shudras do in big city temples? 
Srila Prabhupada revealed a much broader vision of his Varnashram mission, the preaching reason that will envelop the whole world. Srila Prabhupada said, yes, that is a very broad idea. Now we are speaking of some of them, training them. That is another thing. That is small scale. For the big scale, this is required. In big scale, you cannot make all of them as brahmanas or sannyasis. No, that is not possible. This is a small scale. How many percentage of the people of the world are we controlling? Very insignificant. But if you want to make the whole human society perfect, then this Krishna consciousness movement should be introduced according to Krishna's instruction if you want to do it in a large scale for the benefit of the whole human society. Now we are picking up some of them, the best. That is another thing. But Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, para upaka. Why should a certain section be picked up? The whole mass of people will get the benefit of it. Then it is required, systematic. Svesve karmanya bhirata sangsitim labate naraha. Para upaka means mass benefit, not there is a certain section. Then we have to introduce this varnashram dharma. It must be done perfectly and it is possible and people will be happy. So please note very carefully from these excerpts that Srila Prabhupada is different, differentiating between the system that he had personally instituted up to then, up to that time, and the system that he wanted to implement in future so that the whole world can be benefited by this Varnashram system. One of the necessary differences is that the previous system was designed for brahmanas, people very serious about Krishna consciousness, not only very serious but uh, qualified as brahmanas, while the new intended system had to encompass people of all varnas and ashrams. So it's understood that the system of giving everyone Brahminical initiation or designating them as a Brahmana would need modifying. Srila Prabhupada stated, now that we are more and more trying to implement the Varnashram divisions of society, we should not think that everyone has to become a Brahmana. This will be hard to accept for many devotees in our movement which is one reason why I've not tried to promote it very widely. Shortly after this, on the 14th of March, 1977, Srila Prabhupada said, our position is that we are above Varnashram, but for management or ideal society, we are introducing this. So far we are concerned Krishna conscious men we are above Varnashram, but to show the people that we are not escaping, we can take part in any order of life, that is our position. Just like if I brush somebody's shoes, that does not mean I am a shoemaker. My position is the same, but to show how to do it, just like a servant is doing, the master shows, oh, you cannot do, just see. Just like sometimes I show you how to mop. So I'm not a mopper, but I am showing you how to mop. So our position is like that. We do not belong to any varna and ashram, but we have to show these rascals. Srila Prabhupada went on to say, not that he is a shudra, always remember that, but he has to act to fill up the gap. And again, your service will be recognized by Krishna. Don't think that because you are, you are teaching a shudra how to work like this, you have become a shudra. You are not shudras any, under any circumstances. Even though you teach to a shudra how to work like a shudra. <clears throat> so it's understood from these 
conversations that Srila Prabhupada was establishing that although a devotee is intrinsically a brahmana, more than a brahmana, because he's come to the highest position of spiritual practice, Krishna consciousness. But nevertheless, devotees should take roles within society, those who are naturally inclined to teach, preach, study, live an austere life. They should take the role as a brahmana. Others may be designated as kshatriyas, vaishyas, even shudras, to show the people in general how to live in society as a cooperative society with different roles and centered on Krishna. So Srila Prabhupada wanted Varnashram Dharma, which means many changes. Uh, Srila Prabhupada wanted to go beyond the temple-based few people and make this applicable, Krishna consciousness available to the whole world by showing how society can and should be structured according to four, four varnas and four ashrams. Ah, and he wanted devotees to show that, to take the lead. My vision for this, that Srila Prabhupada um, wanted to establish Varnashram Dharma, is that we should revert as far as possible to the traditional culture uh, as it was practiced in India, but without the rigid birth-only misunderstanding. But definitely not everyone should be a Brahmana. Varnashram means there are four varnas, not that everyone's a brahmana. Even before this, these statements in 1977, Srila Prabhupada had said that not everyone coming to his society should be called brahmanas. In a letter which he wrote on the 26th of May 1974, Srila Prabhupada wrote, the presidents must be very careful on recommending Gayatri initiation. After all, we are criticizing false caste brahmanas. If we ourselves are bogus brahmanas, then our position is very bad. Now that we are more and more trying to implement the Varnashram divisions of society, I'll read that again. Now that we are more and more trying to implement the Varnashram divisions of society, we should not think that everyone has to become a brahmana. For example, you are developing a farm there, so those who work the farm do not necessarily have to be a brahmana if they are not inclined to the brahminical standards. In this way, be careful about awarding the second initial. In this way, be careful about awarding the second initiation. In a morning walk on December the 12th, 1973, Srila Prabhupada, he proposed de-Brahmanizing some devotees. He said, now there should be a, an examination whether the so-called Brahmanas are actually following the Brahmana regulative principle and chanting the mantra regularly. Otherwise, they should be converted again to Shudras. If we become safe simply by having a thread and do not do properly, then what is this? This should be examined. Every individual should be asked, now chant this Gayatri mantra. It wasn't instituted, but you get the gist of Srila Prabhupada's mood there, that it's not simply by having a thread. If Srila Prabhupada gives a thread and then you say, well, I'm a Brahmana. If, they, if you don't chant and you don't know what you're doing, how can you be a Brahmana? Now, you may say, okay, but what's all this Brahma Gayatri? You're talking about Brahma Gayatri, not giving to women and this and that, because of Varnashram principles. 
What's what's he got to do with Varnashram? Well, traditionally in Vedic society, as ordained in Shastra and followed by all followers of the Vedic culture, Vaishnava, non-Vaishnava, the purpose of chanting the Brahma Gayatri, also called Savitri or Savitur chanting, it's mainly Varnashram oriented. It's for studying of the Vedas. Now, our Gorya Acharyas have found meanings in Brahma Gayatri. Uh, actually, there are many, many uh, different meanings ascribed to the Brahma Gayatri according to different schools within Vedic culture. And our, our Gorya Vaishnavas have given uh, meanings which are suitable for Vaishnavas to, when meditating on this mantra. But Brahma Gayatri is traditionally part of the Vaidic Diksha. There are different kinds of Diksha. Uh, actually, the, the seven mantras that Srila Prabhupada gave, the first is Brahma Gayatri, and the other six are, uh, can be considered Pancharatric mantras. It is an initiation in as much as it is the required entrance for a male student to enter the world of Vedic studies. To st after taking the Upanayanam, as it's called, which means you hear the Brahma Gaitri and you're invested with the thread, uh, a boy can study the Veda. Traditionally, it's not allowed for women or shudras, or less than shudras. Why did Bhaktisthan Sarsar Thako introduce this Brahma Gayatri for his followers and the, the thread? It was very controversial. By getting the thread and the mantra, you don't become a Vaishnava. For that, Pancha Sanskar is required. In the history of Vedic culture, there are many twice-born, which means Brahmanas, Kshatriyas, and Vaishyas, who had the thread, who had Upanayanam, chanting Brahma Gayatri, but they, then, well, up to the present time, they're not or were not Vaishnavas. It's not specifically a mantra only for Vaishnavas. It's been for all members of the Brahmana, Kshatriya, and Vaishya communities, males. Bhaktista and Saraswara Thakur wanted to take this Varnashram initiative further. Bhaktista and Saraswara Thakur took the order from Bhaktivinoda Thakur about Varnashram, Daiva Varnashram. Bhaktivinoda Thakur wrote so much about the need to implement Daiva Varnashram is not something that I'm dreaming up. It wasn't something that Srila Prabhupada dreamed up. It wasn't something that Bhaktis Dansas or Thakur dreamed up. Bhaktivinoda Thakur spoke of it. And of course, it's nothing that Bhaktivinoda Thakur dreamed up either because it's Krishna's system. But each Acharya took it a little step or a major step further. Srila Bhaktis Dansas or Thakur wanted to. Uh, institute Brahminical initiation for his male followers, giving them threads so that they would be recognized as Brahmanas in society uh, without uh, all the prejudice that, oh, we're Brahmanas and you're, you're, you're lower, you're, you're just a you're just a Vaishnava, or you're, you're, not a, you're not a Brahmana. I'm a Brahmana, and you're from a lower caste, and you're a Vaishnava. Okay, you're a Vaishnava, but I'm higher than you because I'm a Brahmana. But this John Sarsar Thakka wanted to practically address this misconception. He introduced Upanayanam not as an aspect of bhakti per se. 
As Srila Prabhupada writes in his purport to Bhagavatam Canto 10, Chapter 7, Text 13 to 15, Srila Bhaktisiddhanta Saraswara Thakur introduced the sacred thread ceremony for his Vaishnava disciples with the idea that people should understand that when one becomes a Vaishnava, he has already acquired the qualifications of a Brahmana. Therefore, in the International Society for Krishna Consciousness, those who are twice initiated so as to become Brahmanas must bear in mind their great responsibility to be truthful, control the mind and senses, be tolerant, and so on. So Bhaktisthan Saraswar Thakur, Srila Prabhupada explains here, gave that Brahminical initiation for social reasons, not directly spiritual, but for preaching, for reasons that are now largely moot, because Srila Bhaktisthan Saraswar Thakur is giving Brahminical initiation to people not from a Brahminical family, not from a Brahmin caste, to show that Vaishnavas should at least be accepted on the level of those who are considered highest in society for their religious following, namely the Brahmanas. Brahmana had such a status, but nowadays in India, Brahmanas don't have that status. People don't care whether you're Brahmana, non-Brahmana, or anything else. So the idea that we should make people Brahmanas to or, or designate Vaishnavas as Brahmanas uh, to, so that they're accepted within society is not applicable in India and has never been applicable in the West because people don't have a clue what a Brahmana is anyway. Srila Prabhupada, we'll see in this purport, says that those who are twice initiated so, so as to become brahmanas must bear in mind their great responsibility to be truthful, control the mind and senses, be tolerant, and so on. This is what he wanted his brahmanas to demonstrate. Bhaktisiddhan Sasar Thako was practically at war with the caste brahmanas, and he wanted to show that Vaishnavas... Srila Bhaktisthan Sarsar Thako was practically at war with the caste Brahmanas who insisted that it's only by birth you can be a Brahmana. Bhaktisthan Sarsar Thako wanted to show that Vaishnavas should also be considered Brahmanas by their character, that anyone from any background can be a Brahmana by quality by purification, by taking to the Vaishnava system. And he also, as part of reintroducing Varnashram properly into the Gorya Sampradaya, uh, introduced the Sanyas Ashram, Brahmachari Ashram, Gorkishaw Das Babaji and Jagannath Das Babaji Maharaj. They were present at the same time as Bhaktisthan Saswar Thakwa, and they, they didn't chant Brahma Gayatri for any purpose. <laughs> they weren't from Brahmin families. And for Bhakti, they, they, they never considered that we, ne we need to chant Brahma Gayatri and then that will help us in our Bhakti. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and the other Acharyas always stressed, Hare Nama, Hare Nama, Hare Nama Eva Kevalam, Kalo Nastreva, 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 Gati Ranyata. None of them stressed the Brahma Gayatri as a means of devotion. So Bhaktisiddhan Saraswar Thako wanted to reintroduce Varnashram Dharma, Daiva Varnashram Dharma, as did our own Srila Prabhupada. And Srila Prabhupada, his first thrust in this initiative on behalf of his spiritual master was to do the same thing as his spiritual master had done, was to create Brahmanas. He wanted to create a class of a new class of Brahmanas, and therefore, his initiation process was initially designed for that. Again and again, Srila Prabhupada connected the status of a Brahmana 
with the guna and karma of a brahmana. The, in other words, the varnashram duties of a brahmana. Srila Prabhupada would quote, Yasya yal lakshanam proktam pungso varna bivyanjakam yat anyatrapi drishe tat tat tain aiva vinirdishet. That even if, this is Narad Muni's teachings from the seventh canto of Bhagavatam, that even if someone is not born in a particular family, Brahman, Kshatriya, Vaishya, Shudra, if they have qualities as described in Bhagavad Gita of a particular varna, they should be accepted as being a member of that varna and not simply by birth. Uh, Srila Prabhupada often criticized the caste brahmanas of India who are working in jobs, even as rickshaw puller, he would, he, Srila Prabhupada noted that the, the absurdity of it, uh, <clears throat> we know of course from Bhagavatam, as we learn from Srila Prabhupada, that a brahmana should never accept the profession of a dog, shvavriti, in other words, he shouldn't take a salary. Now, Srila Prabhupada wanted to implement Varnashram Dharma. He started farm projects. He said, it's not my program, it's Krishna's program. And therefore, what Srila Prabhupada is talking about, Varnashram Dharma, it's not just one Varna, Brahmana. Therefore, as we have heard, quoting from Srila Prabhupada, he didn't want to continue Brahminical initiation for everyone. If we call it Brahminical initiation, well, how can you call it Brahminical initiation without considering their quality and their work, their varna? Then why call it Brahmin initiation? Brahmin, after all, is a, uh, it's a position within the material world. If we just give everyone a thread and call them a brahmana without seeing how they're developing the qualities, then what's the difference between the caste brahmanas who simply claim to be a, a brahmana on the basis of their birth and a thread and an ISKCON brahmana who claims to be a brahmana on the basis of his initiation and a thread? I'd like to see, and I believe this is what Srila Prabhupada was aiming at, that the level for a Brahminical initiation should be much higher than it is at the present time, not just a formality. Someone's been around for some time, they did some course, but they should actually be absorbed in Brahminical activities, that's the karma, they should be Full-time devotees. Uh, otherwise, full-time devotees, sometimes people get upset by saying that, but what I mean to say is not that they're working in a job or have a profession, but they're, they're, their karma is fully, directly centered on activities which are directly and not secondarily devotional service. And ISKCON Brahmanas, uh, we would like to see that people, even non-devotees, can immediately recognize and respect them for their qualities as described in Bhagavad Gita. Shamo damatta basho cham kshanti arjavam evacha jnanam vijnanam astikyam brahma karmas vabhavajam for their peacefulness, self-control, austerity, tolerance, uh, cleanliness, knowledge of scripture, uh, wisdom, the practical ability to act and guide others according to that knowledge of Shastra. I believe this is what Srila Prabhupada wanted when he said he wanted to establish a class of brahmanas. Now, about Brahma Gayatri for women, Srila Bhaktisthan Saraswati didn't give it. Uh, 
generally in the Gorya Mat, it's not given. There may be some cases. And it's never been given to any women in any orthodox, what we call orthodox, that means those orthodox uh, Vedic Sampradaya, Vaishnava or otherwise. Orthodox means according to the Shad Darshan. Uh, previously, no women were given Brahma Gayatri. That was the practice which was followed by all Acharyas in all levels of Vedic culture. There must be some reason for that. Uh, it's not misogyny, as that word is used, when women are not treated e exactly the same as men. In the modern world, that's called misogyny, hatred of women. But Vedic culture, Brahmanas, Kshatriyas, Vaishyas, and Shudras all have very different roles, and women's role is delineated also as being different from that of men. And one of the differences is that women are not given Brahminical initiation. So this practice was done by all the Vaishnava Acharyas. It's authorized and in line with the Shastra, Pancharatra, especially Narada Pancharatra, uh, Undoubtedly, the position of a Vaishnava is above that of a Brahmana. There are many quotes in this regard. For instance, we learn from Sri Prahlad Maharaj, Viprad Dvisharda Guna Yutad Aravindana Bha Padaravinda Vimukhat Shvapachang Varishtam Manyeta Darpita Mano Vachane Hitartha Pranang punati sakulang natubhuri manaha. Srila Prabhupada's translation. If a Brahmana has all twelve of the Brahminical qualifications, as they are stated in the book called Sanat Sujata, but is not a devotee and is averse to the lotus feet of the Lord, he is certainly lower than a devotee who is a dog eater but who has dedicated everything, mind, word, activities, wealth, and life to the Supreme Lord. Such a devotee is better than a brahmana because the devotee can purify his whole family, whereas the so-called brahmana in a position of false prestige cannot purify even himself. So a devotee, even from a family of a dog-eater, who's actually dedicated everything to the Supreme Lord, is in a better position than someone who's simply puffed up by being a brahmana. Even if that brahmana has uh, brahminical qualities, peacefulness, self-control, and so on. Now, the... <clears throat> you may say, well, that's okay, but what about... The women, why are they left out of this? And why did Srila Prabhupada give Brahma Gayatri to women if no Acharyas did previously? Srila Prabhupada didn't explain why he did so, and he didn't make a principle out of it. He didn't explain it. It's not easy to understand an Acharya's motives every time. Some things may be not very clear. Vaishnava Kriya Mudra Vigyehana Bhujoy. Uh, even if one is very learned, the activities of a Vaishnava may be very difficult to understand. Srila Prabhupada didn't explain why he did this. He didn't make an issue of it. He didn't say that, well, all the previous tradition and Shastra was misogynistic. And I'm rectifying that, which previous Acharyas didn't dare to do, including my own Guru Maharaj who fought with the Brahmanas, uh, the caste Brahmanas. So why, why did Srila Prabhupada do that? 
Again, he didn't make an issue of it. He didn't say, I'm, I'm changing the course of history by doing this. Uh, one explanation that was the standard explanation for many years was that Srila Prabhupada first in America gave initiation to three men, uh, and, but not to women, and the women devotees were upset, so the next day Srila Prabhupada gave the mantras, the same mantras. Uh, now that history is being rewritten and saying, no, that wasn't the reason, but it was already published around 1980 in the, uh, and if it had been such a big blunder, misinterpretation, we wonder why no one is, until recently, has taken this up and said, no, no, that's wrong. It, it wasn't because of that. One of the three women who were first initiated like that uh, in a video which is available in the Srila Prabhupada memory series says that I was upset that why are the men taking and not the women and now she has changed her story so it's rewriting history that no no I wasn't upset because of this I was upset for another reason so it's called revision of history but we don't know it that it was presumed like that Uh, we can't say exactly. But even then, if we think that whatever Srila Prabhupada instituted within his presence should be continued and not changed, then we should rescind the female Diksha Guru resolution because Srila Prabhupada only called for 11 male devotees to be the Ritvika Acharyas at the time. Uh, we should not have appointed devotees in female bodies as GBCs or temple presidents, the whole midday meals thing going on in India, eye camps and so on. Uh, that should all be stopped. That wasn't going on in Srila Prabhupada's presence. Kirtan Mailers, there was no concept of that. Uh, when Srila Prabhupada was present, the every devotees come and they sit down for a few days and chant together. Of course, Srila Prabhupada said in temples there could be 24-hour kirtans, but not kirtan melas. So, exactly the same. Nothing should change. Is that how we should proceed? When Srila Prabhupada himself specifically said that the initiation system should change as we're instituting Varnashram Dharma. It's just that we never did it and now we think it should never be done. Why is that? When Srila Prabhupada said it should be done. So this Varnashram Dharma, someone has to work on it. Someone has to start it. It should have been done by the top leadership of Srila Prabhupada's society, but they haven't done it. I want to try and, in whatever small capacity I can do, I want to start working on this. And I have started working on this. We have a few farms here and there, and I, I want to do this more and more in whatever way I can. I can't wait for orders to come from on high or some plan on how to do it and say, well, you shouldn't do this according to Varnashram, you shouldn't do this according to... But others are not doing anything, with few exceptions. I, I can't wait for that. I'm going to leave this body soon. I want to do something to fulfill Srila Prabhupada's order regarding Varnashram, whatever I can do. And it's not just in the initiation system. It's like I say, we're, we're starting farms, uh, as Srila Prabhupada wanted to demonstrate Varnashram on the farms. It's necessarily experimental because Srila Prabhupada gave some 
ideas about Varnashram. He did say in the final days he was with us that I want to sit down at Gita Nagari and show how to establish Varnashram, but he didn't do it. So what we're doing is necessarily experimental. So I'm, I haven't been publicizing this or campaigning that everyone should do it because I'm just doing, in my own small capacity, something experimental. And if you say that, well, everyone has to initiate in this way, well, we learn from the nectar of devotion in, in chapter 6, how to discharge devotional service, Srila Prabhupada, writes that a basic principle is that one has to accept a spiritual master. Exactly how one follows the instruction of his spiritual master is considered a detail. For example, if one is following the instruction of his spiritual master and that instruction is different from the instructions of another spiritual master, this is called detailed information, which again raises the question of details and principles. But is it that every spiritual master following Srila Prabhupada has to instruct his disciples in exactly the same way? It raises questions regarding Guru's latitude. If you try to put everyone into some straitjacket, Gurus are going to be diverse in the way they practice and preach Krishna consciousness. There may be many branches of the Chaitanya tree, sub-branches, coming from Srila Prabhupada and trying to crush everyone into one mold. It's not going to work. That famous saying, unity and diversity. There will be problems, doubts, contentious issues. It's better that devotees discuss threadbare according to Shastra and tradition rather than trying to force everyone with resolutions of which the very basis will be challenged, as with this. How I see it, as the, gradually as the Krishna Consciousness Movement expands, there may be many gurus giving Nrsingha mantras, or Lakshmi Narayan mantras, or Sita Ram mantras. Although Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's movement focuses on Radha Krishna in Vrindavan, it's much broader than that. So I, I see in, in future, and maybe could start even now, that a devotee who is himself particularly inclined to the worship of Sita Ram, he may have that uh, may have that devotional propensity and gather around him others who are, in, who are inclined like that. And maybe they'll give some other mantras, which, uh, of course, this is just a suggestion. But I'm just saying, what are the possibilities? Just <clears throat> Everyone has to be exactly like this. Anyway, much more about this can, can be said. And I'm sure it will be. There'll be much more discussed about this. I'll stop here. Please forgive me. I, 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 I'm not going to say if I made offenses. I know I make offenses. Please may forgive me for that. But there, there are certain things I feel I have to do in Srila Prabhupada's service. This is one of them. I pray for the understanding of the Vaishnavas. Vancha kalpa tarubhyas cha kripa sindhubi evacha. Patitanam pavade bhyo, Vaishnave bhyo, namo namaha. Dante nitaya chunakang padiyani patya kritva cha kaku shatam etat aham ravimi. Hey, sadhava sakala eva vihaya durad, goranga chandra charane kurutana raga. Parivadatu jano yata tata va nano mukharo navayang vichare amaha. Hari rasa madira madati mata. Bhuvi velutama nartama nirvishama. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama.